Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's session. I hope you're all scaling up for a great preparation ahead. And we still have uh, a decent one month of time, 30 more days. We can do a lot of things that is going to give us the seat, the dream seat and a top rank in the NEET PG. So I hope you all downloaded the Incas app and taking the mock test every day. Every day morning, there is a new mock test published. And uh, once you solve the question paper, in the evening, we have a discussion. So that is a plan. So let's make the great beginning, doctor. Good to see. Srijana Sridhar. Good to see Srijana Sridhar and many more who are all online. Yes. The Bragg's Peak, where is it found? The Bragg's Peak. Keep punching your answers, Doctor. The Bragg's Peak is found in Proton Beam. So whenever you are giving a focus radiotherapy, using the ionizing radiation to the tumor without affecting the normal healthy surrounding tissues, we use the concept of Bragg Peak. So Bragg curve is the one which plots the energy loss of the ionizing radiation whenever it is passing through the tissues is what you need to remember. When there is a raised intracranial tension, what is the earliest sign? It is the sutural diastasis. The separation of the sutures is considered to be the earliest sign. So whenever there is an acute rise of ICT in infants, it is sutural diastasis. And whenever there is a chronic rise in intracranial tension, then there is a copper beating of the skull wall. It is considered to be the sign of the rise in ICT. Here's what I want to underscore to all of you. Drooping water lily sign. Where do you see? Whenever there is any duplicated renal pelvic system, then superior pole of the renal mass will give you the drooping water lily sign is what I want to underscore to all of you. So duplicated collecting system. So there is an inferior lateral displacement of the opacified lower pole because of a obstructed upper pole will give you the drooping Water lily sign is what you should remember. A cold lesion on the bone scan, it suggests a metastasis. Metastasis. 99 technetium labeled RBC. Where do we use? Whenever GI bleeding is there, you use the RBCs which are tagged with the the technetium 99M, which will enable you to discover the GI bleeding, is what you should remember. So, scintigraphy is 10 times more sensitive than angiography for the detection of the GI bleeding, is what you should remember. Post traumatic stress disorder, entrance exam is over, results came, it was a trauma. So recollection of the events is responsible for the post-traumatic stress disorder. Brooding followed by homicidal tendency. Going around and attacking everybody 
that is called amok. So amok is a brief period of episodic violence marked by brooding ending up in homicide. It is seen in the men in Philippines. So be careful when you go for a honeymoon to Philippines. Buffy delirante. What does it mean? There are all those psychotic symptoms with marked agitation, auditory and visual hallucinations in West Africa. So Buffy delirante is the French name for acute and transient psychotic disorder. Hutt syndrome, it is the anxiety over the loss of the semen by masturbation or in the urine along with some somatic symptoms of weakness etc. is common in the young males of Indian subcontinent with poor sexual knowledge. Koro, it is a sudden anxiety over a belief that one's penis is shrinking. In the case of the females, nipples and vulva are shrinking and receding into the body, leading to death. That is the kind of an anxiety which is called Kuro, commonly seen in Malaysia. Lata, it is also seen in Southeast Asia, where there is a onset of fright, echolalia, echopraxia and command obedience is what you need to remember. Mostly seen in women. Spell. What is spell? One is able to talk with the ghosts, spirits and susto, where one fears that his soul is going out of the body. It is seen in the Asia and African cultures. Of course, when NEET PG exam is over, I will answer zero out of 200. That is also a kind of a psychotic episode. So don't get into that. Kleptomania. Even if you don't prepare also, you will get 60 out of 200 correctly. Don't worry. If you have slightly prepared, you will make 100. If you're seriously prepared, you can easily make 150 out of 200 correctly. Done. You are into the MD. Kleptomania. There's a fear before stealing. That's an impulse. I have to steal. I have to steal. Common in females. There's an irresistible desire to steal. But even the objects stolen are not costly. There are some trivial, trivial things. So it is the urge, unable to control that urge to steal and the sense of relief after stealing. That is the whole story of kleptomania. So how do you manage kleptomaniacs? SSRIs, like any other obsessive disorder, is the first line of the treatment for kleptomania. Cataplexy. What is cataplexy? So you should remember, cataplexy is a sudden loss of the muscle tone. There will be episodes of sudden involuntary loss of the muscle tone without loss of consciousness. That is cataplexy. Often it is the emotional outburst like laughing, crying is responsible. And what leads to cataplexy? It is the hypocritin deficiency, which is a neurotransmitter in the hypothalamus, which regulates our arousal. We are awake means because of the hypocrite. So any lesion in the hypothalamus brainstem or a sudden withdrawal of SSRIs can lead to the development of cataplexy. So how do you treat cataplexy? We give SNRIs, serotonin, norepinephrine, reuptake inhibitor, like velnafaxin, duloxetin, then uh, SSRIs, because any sudden withdrawal of SSRIs can lead to the development of cataplexy. Similarly, gene therapy with hypocritin, etc., etc. Often, cataplexy is associated with narcolepsy. So, what is the tetrad of clinical features of narcolepsy? Cataplexy, automatism, sleep paralysis, and hypnagogic hallucinations constitute the four clinical features of narcolepsy, is what you should remember. 
If there is a depression with suicidal tendency, then they require electroconvulsive therapy. So you must know well, everything, doctor. Please remember ECT. Psychiatry may five questions will come. In the schizophrenia, definitely one question. Electroconvulsive therapy is a very hot topic. You have to be hundred percent sure about. It. All of the cycle fistula. It presents with air bubbles in the urine, pneumaturia, because all the colonic gas will pass into the bladder, into the bladder, and pneumaturia is the presenting feature. Infant with hypertrophic pyloric stenosis, what is the dyserythylidemia? Hypokalemic, hypochloremic, metabolic alkalosis because of the recurrent vomiting. Recurrent vomiting lead to recurrent vomiting lead to hypovolemia. Hypovolemia will lead to secondary hyperaldosteronism. Hyperaldosteronism. Aldosterone will cause sodium retention and K plus H plus loss into urine. Loss of H plus into urine will lead to metabolic alkalosis. Loss of potassium will lead to hypokalemia. So hypokalemic, hypochloremic, metabolic alkalosis is the dyslipidemia, which you see in the case of hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. Least common volvulus in neonate is large bubble volvulus because most common is small bubble volvulus. A small tumor and colonic polyps. What is that called? Gardner's syndrome is an autosomal dominant syndrome. Where adenomatous polyps or adenocarcinoma, osteomas, skin and soft tissue tumors, they all coexist with each other. What is the initial investigation for biliary obstruction? It is the ultrasound. Whenever there is any jaundice or symptoms of biliary disease, first thing you should do is ultrasound. One of the very, very important MCQ for the need PG tomorrow. For pneumoperitoneum, of course, a erect abdominal x-ray can help you. But CT is most sensitive for detecting the pneumoperitoneum. Now you should know a few radiological signs of the pneumoperitoneum. So there's a lot of air in the peritoneum. So it will be outlining the solid organs like liver and spleen. That's called lucent liver sign. Then around the falciform ligament, umbilical, median, medial, lateral ligaments, there will be air which is called inverted V sign. So inverted V sign is, you can see, there's a free air which is outlining the Lateral umbilical ligament coursing inferiorly and laterally from the umbilicus. That's called inverted sign whenever there is pneumoperitoneum. Similarly, this is called a lucent liver sign. Lucent liver sign. So where you are able to see the A. Then doji's cap sign. Doji's capsaine is presence of a triangular air outlining the Morrison's pouch. So Morrison's pouch is the space between the right kidney and the liver. Between the right kidney and the liver. So there if you are finding air, that's called Doji's capsaine. The bowel wall is outlined by air on both the sides. That's called Riegler's sign is what you should remember. Riegler's sign. So this is how the Riegler's sign, Riegler's sign looks like. Where you are able to see the outline of the bubble ball in pneumoperitoneum. And a lot of centrally placed intraperitoneal free air will look like a football, football sign. In the case of the children, even scrotal air will be found. Underneath the diaphragm, you will find the air which is called as 
Q polar sign. So this is how the outlining of the air of the pneumoperitoneum will give what is called as a football sign uh, is what you should remember. A chronic alcoholic presents with regurgitation, retrosternal pain. There is a barren esophagus. What is the most appropriate management? Endoscopic biopsy every two years. Follicular versus papillary carcinoma of thyroid. Once more, I want to tell you, doctor. Thyroid carcinoma. Without this, there is no question paper. Thyroid carcinoma. Garbadaram topic. So, you should know that the follicular carcinoma of the thyroid, there are frequent bony metastases. If you do FNAC, you can't differentiate adenoma from carcinoma, follicular, unless you do a biopsy. That's the reason FNAC is not diagnostic. Which hernia re reoccurrence of the primary repair? Incisional hernias. Very common. After doing hysterectomy, you will put the mesh once more, there will be a recurrence. A larger defect, more than 2 to 3 centimeter in diameter, high recurrence rate. Whenever you do the colectomy or any resection and do anastomosis. What provides strength to that anastomosis? It is a submucosa. Strongest component of the bubble wall is submucosa because it has a lot of collagen. Benign small bubble tumor. It causes hemorrhage, most commonly asymptomatic, accidentally discovered during surgery. So adenomas are the most common benign tumors in the small bubble tumors. And what are the most common benign small bubble lesions that become symptomatic? It is the gastrointestinal stromal tumors. The most common site of the carcinoid so all these most comments are very important, doctor. Most common site of carcinoid in GIT is appendix. Most common site of carcinoid in small bubble is ileum. Most common site for the adenocarcinoma of the small bubble is duodenum and proximal jejunum. Most common small bubble tumor in children less than 10 years is lymphoma. And which small bubble tumor has the best prognosis? Carcinoid. So what is Burns grading grade 2? It is the involvement of the dermis. So you should remember, first degree means localized to epidermis. Epidermis, superficial dermis is superficial second degree. Epidermis, deep dermis is second degree, deep. Third is full thickness injury through epidermis dermis into subcutaneous fat is third degree. Fourth degree is injury to the skin and subcutaneous fat into the underlying muscle or the bone is the fourth degree is what you should remember. So what is wrong about medullary carcinoma? It produces calcitonin, yes sir. It arises from C cells, yes sir. You do prophylactic thyroidectomy whenever the medullary carcinoma is the part of the men's syndrome. Yes, sir. But most often, MCTs occur in the sporadic form. That's what you need to remember. But they can be part of men 2 a men 2 b or FMTC, which is familial medullary thyroid cancer. About carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome can occur with pregnancy, diabetes, acromegaly, and, uh, and also hypothyroidism, not the hyper. It is the hypo hypothyroidism. During palpation of the hepatodiodinal ligament, 
there is a pulsation felt dorsal end to the right of common bilateral. So what is the most likely possibility? It is a replaced right hepatic artery. So if you look at the variation of the hepatic artery anatomy, it is in the right hepatic artery origin from the superior mesenteric artery. This is called replaced hepatic artery. So the pulsations encountered in the porta hepatis gastrohepatic ligaments you need to assess. If the hepatic artery is small, the surgeon must be alert of a possibility of a replaced hepatic vessel. Now coming to the gallbladder epithelium. So it leads to the absorption of the water, sodium chloride and hydrogen, secretion of hydrogen ions, not conjugated by the salts. Now, black pigment, brown pigment, gallstones, what is the difference? So, black pigment versus brown pigment. It is the stasis and infection important for the brown pigment gallstones. And if you do bile culture, they are positive in most patients. And a scanning electron microscopy shows bacterial colonies. And this brown pigment gallstones, they are found commonly in the common bile duct and gallbladder, especially in the older people with stasis and in post cholecystectomy patients, you see them. Black pigment gallstones are because of a metabolic cause, either hemolysis, releasing the bilirubin, or cirrhosis, any of them can cause. In gallstone disease, what are the three cardinal classical features of the gallstone disease doctor? So you should remember, Hyperechoic intraluminal focus, shadowing posterior to that focus, and the movement of the focus with change in position of the patient. There are the three typical gallstone features on ultrasound. But acoustic enhancement posterior to the structure that is seen with the cystic structures. It is not the feature of a gallstone. So this is called posterior acoustic enhancement, which is classical of a cystic structure is what you need to remember about the ultrasound. 50 year old women, asymptomatic ultrasound is shown. So what is your diagnosis, what is your treatment and uh, what does it basically suggest you? So whenever there is any cholelithiasis, gallstone, the first thing in a symptomatic patient is basically to do the observation. Now, acute cholecystitis, what is the most accurate Way to diagnose doctor, he does scan the PP, does scan with technetium per technate, radionuclear. A six year old alcoholic, vomiting, abdominal pain, distension, decreased passage of the stool, and flatus. He undergone abdominal perineal resection about 18 months earlier. So any intra-abdominal surgery can lead to small bubble obstruction by forming adhesions or any extrinsic compression or pantyridis with ileus, but it is unlikely to be alcoholic hepatitis with the situs. A 26-year-old arrives to the emergency with the complaint of recurrent colicky mid-abdominal pain and a CD scan is being shown. There is a pigmentation of his lips, 
forms souls. So, what is the clue? Pugh's Jagger syndrome. Pugh's Jagger syndrome is often associated with intuception, which you are able to see here. Now, a 15 year old boy from Lucknow, persistent right lower quadrant pain, intermittent cramping, abdominal pain, normal bubble movements, and what do you see here? String sign of cantor. String sign of cantor, which is the feature of inflammatory bubble disease. So then, the only way to relieve that is exploratory laparotomy with segmental resection is considered to be the management of choice. Now, one year after undergoing anthectomy and Bilderot type 2 reconstruction for peptic ulcer disease, you are evaluating patient for anemia. And also there is a pain relieved by projectile bilious emesis without food particles. So Bilrath type 2 means you are leaving a stump of deodorum where bacterial overgrowth can happen. And there is a bacterial deconjugation of the bile salts leading to steatoria. So blind loop syndrome is a known complication of the Bilroth type 2 gastrectomy is what you have to remember. 62 year old women complaints of abdominal pain, weight loss, endoscopic polypectomy of a gastric polyp. She has a strong family history of breast cancer. So now if the lesion is noted in the intestine and it is metastatic, from where intestine receives metastasis outside abdomen. So intestinal metastasis coming from outside abdomen will be coming from melanoma. Cutaneous melanoma is the most common extra abdominal source of metastasis to the small bubble is what you need to remember. A 54 year old man Palpitation, significant weight loss, underwent under endoscopy. There are hepatic lesions that reveal carcinoid tumor. So with regard to this, the cutaneous phenomena like flushing is the most characteristic and frequently recognized manifestations of a carcinoid syndrome is what you should remember. 85 year old women with abdominal pain with abdominal distension, tachycardic, oliguric, acidotic. And what are you able to see here, doctor? You are able to see a biliary fistula with the aid. So there's a gallstone ileus which accounts for almost all 1% of 1% of all intestinal obstructions. So you need to do enterotomy and removal of the mass. Now a woman is undergoing a open incisional hernia repair and incidentally you found this. What is the structure doctor? Meckel's diverticulum. So Meckel's is a true diverticulum. It's the most frequent diverticulum encountered in the small bowel. In 2 to 4 percent the general population. Along the anti-mesentric border of the ileum. Around 50 to 75 centimeters from the ileocecal valve. That's what you need to remember. So the rule of two in Meckel. A 54 year old man on barium, small bubble follow through, 
there is a mass in medium and the surgical exploration what is it showing it is once more showing carcinoid so the carcinoid prognosis is related to the size of the tumor location of the tumor and the histological pattern now what is the developmental anomaly that is associated with this appearance it is pancreatic divism which occurs because the failed fusion of the ventral and dorsal pancreatic ducts ventral and dorsal pancreatic ducts lead to the development of the pancreatic divism in fact in ecophema there's a break in medial cortex external rotation break in shenton's line and the trochanter become more prominent fracture ecophema what is the device that you use it is a multiple cancellous screws bossing of the frontal parietal bone in the rickets by about 6 months unilateral congenital dislocation of the hip in a 14 year old presenting with pain you have to do total hip replacement after reaching the adulthood once more doctor one of the mcqs congenital telepathic synovitis and the club foot and uh, the congenital dislocation of the hip two topics started compulsory question in the orthopedics in congenital dislocation affected thigh is shortened when the knees and hips are flexed to 90 degrees that is called galiazzi sign is what you need to remember now burst fracture of the vertebral body the fracture is considered to be unstable it is due to the vertical compression fascia elements are usually intact very good to see srijana sridam and many more who are all actively punching the answers very good doctor so every day when you wake up in the morning you take a test need pg full scale mock test on incas app then evening 6 pm we will have a discussion on the 100 questions you pick up at least 10 to 15 topics where you have gone wrong in the test go back and strengthen them that's the only secret that takes you to become the topper so what are the most common affected site in tb spine it is a third lumbar area what are the commonest type of vertebral tb it is a paradiscal type in partial dislocation what do you have flexion adduction internal rotation for the is what you need to remember how does anterior shoulder dislocation occur if you fall on a outstretched hand with the shoulder abducted and externally rotated and you fall then that lead to anterior shoulder dislocation which laser is used in lasik eczema laser so the laser energy will change and alter the curvature of cornea in myopia cornea is flattened hypermetropia it becomes more curved so what is the indication for lasik this is the favorite important mcq myopia up to 6 to 8 diopters hypermetropia up to 4 diopters astigmatism up to 5 diopters is the indication for the lasik for retinal encephalation what do you use SF6 sulfur hexafluoride Dalen Fuchs not Jules 
busakka non-dual sympathetic ophthalmitis. So what is the earliest symptom of sympathetic ophthalmitis, doctor? Loss of accommodation. Earliest sign is retinal flare. And the enucleation of the injured eye within 10 days is required whenever it is mandatory. With regard to the retina, optic disc is medial to macular. And retina has more rods than cones, supplied by central retinal artery. And the only nerve tissue which you can be able to see through the naked eye is retina. And the size of the optic disc is 1.5 mm. If you do goniotomy, it is a congenital glaucoma. In goniotomy, you will make an incision through the angle of the anterior chamber and the superficial layer of the trabecular meshwork is incised and opened up. So primary congenital glaucoma with a clear cornea is considered to be an indication. Posterior staphyloma. Where do you see? In case of glaucoma, pathological myopia, uveoscleritis, etc. etc. So staphyloma is the ectasia of the outer coats, cornea, sclera, or both, with an incarceration of the uveal tissue into that ectatic part of the cornea and sclera. Joint papillary conjunctivitis. If you use a soft hydrophilic contact lens, it is a risk factor for developing joint papillary conjunctivitis. Now, Diabetic retinopathy, it is a proliferation of the endothelial cells and loss of pericytes is one of the earliest features of the diabetic retinopathy is what you should remember. Macular toxicity, if you give intravitreal gentamicin, amikacin, they are toxic to macula. Von Hippel-Lindau syndrome, where there are hemangioblastomas, it is the cerebellar hemangioblastomas. Where you see von Hippel, you see it in von Hippel Lindorf syndrome. Diesel batch plexus, sinopalatine, greater palatine, superior labial, they all the part of the kissel back. So anterior ethmoidal artery, septal branch of the superior labial artery, greater palatine artery, sinopalatine artery, they are all the branches. The mouse nibbled appearance of the vocal cords. Where do you see that? TB larynx. So there is an ulceration of the vocal cord, mouse nibbled appearance. Granulation on the arytenoids. Then pseudo edema of the epiglottis called turban epiglottis. They're all the cla classical features. Now, if you look at the lupus versus TB, lupus affects anterior part of the larynx. And uh, lupus, it is the first epiglottis is affected. Lupus is often painless, mostly asymptomatic, good prognosis. Whereas syphilis, generally it is the tertiary stage of the Syphilis vein, laryngeal involvement is seen. Tympanometry, we use 220 hertz. Mid tracheostomy means two to second to third ring. You'll be doing the tracheostomy. So high tracheostomy to the first tracheal ring only done for malignancy of the larynx. Mid tracheostomy most commonly done between second and third rings. Low tracheostomy done through fourth and fifth. When are the airways blocked by at the upper tracheal level, just like in uh, laryngeal papillomatosis, you will be doing uh, low tracheostomy. Osteomas are very common in the frontal bone. Vocal cords, it is a stratified squamous epithelium that lines the vocal cords. Once more, doctor. 
वन एम सी क्यू टुमारो स्नेक पीजी शूर शॉट आएगा एपिथीलियम एपिथीलियल लाइनिंग अगर नहीं आए तो मेरा नाम मुरली भरद्वाज नहीं What is the commonest cause of the hoarseness of the voice in elderly man? More than three months, then you need to be worried. Cancer larynx is what you need to remember. So, what is the surface marking for the mastoid antrum, doctor? It is the McEwen's triangle, also called supramiatal triangle, which is bounded by supramiatal crest. Partial superior segment of the bony external auditory canal and a line drawn to the external auditory canal. Type A tympanogram is in the case of the normal ear. So air pressure in the middle ear is normal. Peak, it will peak at uh, the atmospheric pressure. Now, AD means deep curve with tall peak, ossicular chain disruption. AS means shallow curve with reduced compliance. It is seen in otosclerosis. B curve means there is no sharp peak; it is a rounded peak, fluid in the middle ear, like otitis media. I mean. Uh, um type c is peak compliance below zero negative middle ear pressure like you stay in tube block a 30 year old patient presented with these clinical features what is true about this condition ramsey hunt syndrome typically there is a facial paralysis sensory neural hearing loss and vesicular eruptions over the pinna they are all the features of the ramsey hunt syndrome children double bodies where do you see endodermal sinus tumor recently delivered lactating mother dipo provera Deep transfer sinus is seen in android pelvis. Barrier type of contraception is using the spermicidal jelly. PPH is controlled by using carboprost. Carboprost is PGF2 alpha. Alprost is synthetic PGE1, which is used for erectile dysfunction, PDA, etc., etc. Now, what is except about the endometrial carcinoma? OCPs have a protective effect and reduce the risk. Once more, let me tell you, doctor. Two hundred MCQs entrance means very easy to crack, unlike three hundred, because the gynoc questions in a three hundred paper are supposed to go up to thirty, but here it is only twenty. Medicine only twenty. Surgery instead of thirty, it will be only twenty. So you can ignore a lot of topics if you are not really good with, right? So that is very important. Fetal skull diameter, which is longest, is mentovertical. Wolf test, bacterial vaginosis. Here's your design: PCO, DCA, health, obesity. In all this, you find. Hirsutism, absent uterus but a normal breast with a scanty pubic hair, that is called testicular feminization syndrome or androgen insensitivity syndrome. It is excellent receptive, receptor level resistance to the action of testosterone. In this, the breast development is adequate. Phenotypically, look female. No axillary pubic hair. External genitalia will be that of a female. Vagina is short and blind, and upper two thirds of the vagina and uterus and tubes are absent because of the anti-mullerian hormone. Is what you need to remember. So, how do you investigate that? Karyotype will help you. Karyotype instead of X is this X Y. 
Serum E2 is high, LH is high. You need to do gonadal biopsy where you can see the seminiferous tubules which are hyalinized and small with absent spermatogenesis in this otherwise girl who has a vagina short and blind ending vagina. Placenta in which the vessels divide before reaching the margin is called velamentous placenta. So circumvalate means smaller chorionic plate. Suction shuriata, one or more lobes of placenta in place separate from the margin. Battle door means cord is attached to the margin of the placenta. Velamentous is attached to the membranes, cord. Halbans disease, typically a benign ovarian condition leading to aminoria, persistent corpus luteal function. Treatment is excision. So this persistent carpus luteum, it causes irregular shedding and bleeding from the failure of regeneration of the endometrium. Sentinel lymph node biopsy. It is done in case of vulva, cervix, breast cancer. Sentinel lymph node means the first node that drains the primary tumor. HPV 16, sweet 16 is dangerous 16. 16, 18, 31, 33, 35, high risk. HPV 6 and 11 are genital ones. What decides the outcome of a twin pregnancy? It is the chorionicity which determines the outcome. So once more, one of the favorite important MCQ, which you should not do mistake. If the division occurs less than 72 hours, diamniotic, dicaryonic, chorionic, dad. Division from 4 to 8 days is diamniotic, monochorionic, dam. Division from 9 to 13 days, monoamniotic, monochorionic, ma'am. Division after 13 days is a conjoint or a Siamese twin. Most common is thoracophix. Once more, twin pregnancy. One out of 20 MCQs in NDPG may twin pregnancy na hai to mere naam murli bardhaj nahi hai. Cord prolapse, common with complete breach, knee presentation and foot link presentation. So the complete breach is more common in multi-gravida with a lax abdominal wall. Frank breach is more common in the primary gravida. Footling breach, there is a very high chance of cord prolapse. Is what you need to remember. Chlamydial urethritis is there in pregnancy. Erythromycin is considered to be the treatment. So what is quadruple test? In Down syndrome doctor. Triple test means metal serum alphidoprotein, unconjugate estriol and HCG. Quadruple means... MSAFP, UE3, HCG plus inhibiting A also. Integrated test means NT, PAP, A, HCG. So what happens in Down syndrome? Inhibiting A increase, HCG increase, MSAFP decrease, PAP decrease, UE3, estriol is also decreased. So what is the life of Mirena? Five years. Mirena is a Levinor just releasing IOCD. A total LNG of total Levinor just 12. 52 milligrams released at 20 microgram per day and replaced every five years. APLA, antiphospholipid antibody. It can lead to recurrent fetal loss, thrombosis and the coagulation. Even though laboratory may, APTT is prolonged excessively. Bleeding is not the way of presentation of the APLA is what you need to remember. <laughs> Wonderful to see 20 online classmates. Very good, doctor. Very good. Let me once more promise you all guys. March 5th to April 15th. Charles Ding. 
फोर्टी डेज लाइक ए हनुमान चालीसा रिविजन इन अवर चाइल्डहुड अवर ग्रैनी माई यूज टू मेक अस टू रिसाइड हनुमान चालीसा फॉर फोर्टी डे पीरियड दे आर ऑल वंडरफुल डेज coming from the school throw the chappal have a quick wash go to the lord shiva's temple play with the friends sit for a while come back home in the moonlight do a little homework and then go to sleep in our small village modern day children we are putting them on too much stress ipad based learning this learning that learning e learning computer training oh my god bullshit all bullshit even need pg preparation also let me tell you doctor of course we run one of the state of art uh, inca sat 2000 hd videos we give a lot of live quiz tournaments so much of digital content but actually there is not so much to read it's only 4 to 5 months of time if you spend with dr murli bharadwaj studying daily focused way 400 500 topics that's all you will be on the topper list if you read more that is bad to health for the need pg because the more and more you read you need to carry all that baggage right it is too much of heavy weight on the brain give some time opportunity for the brain to think you enjoy the preparation that is important if you are overloading yourself with information nothing you are going to make it for shoulder dis toshia you use macro boots maneuver boots maneuver janavli's maneuver so what is macro boot flex the maternal thighs onto the abdomen to straighten the sacrum to provide more space for the delivery of the shoulder boots maneuver Posterior shoulder is rotated anteriorly under the general anesthesia. Generally, maneuver pushing the fetus inside and doing a cesarean section or symphysioidal. But what is Mauricio Sibilli maneuver? It is used in the cases of the breech delivery. Is what you need to remember. Now, with regard to the maternal screening. elevated afp levels are usually found in maternal serum in 80% of cases and amniotic fluid in 95% of cases when there are open neural tube defects so what is the classical screening test triad in edward doctor low hcg low estriol with low afp then so you should know all these first trimester screening test performed between 11 to 14 years 14 weeks nuclear translucency pap a hcg msafp etc etc with regard to the dating in pregnancy a 40 week gestational period is based on the menstrual weeks rather than conception and this assumes ovulation occurring on day 14 of a 28 day cycle a primary gravid typically starts feeling the baby moving around by 19th week just like neet pg aspirant will start the movement inside once the notification comes like that and ultrasound dating it is most accurate if you perform it between 7 to 11 weeks i leave all this literature doctor the powerpoint the video everything is made available on the incas learning app so i hope you all enjoyed the discussion so what is the outcome outcome is 10 topics pakdo where you have got done wrong in the morning every day morning when you wake up open the inca sap while brushing the teeth tick 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 answer karo 100 questions ka khatam karo half an hour mein 
then check where you have gone wrong. Okay, these are the 10 topics I should end. There is also a PowerPoint available on the Inca app along with every mock test. Just run through the slides, know where you are going wrong. Then go to the reading room and then finish Khatam, those 10 15 topics. Evening come and join discussion with Dr. Murli Bharadwaj, your classmate, reading roommate, benchmate, every day preparing with you, folding your hand until you become the winner. So past 20 years, 2 lakh medical students, I had an opportunity and privilege to help them to become toppers, almost every year around 10,000 students. One common denominator to all the toppers is they are not brilliant guys. They are not extraordinary guys. They are only focused guys. They did not read a lot. They read very little, focused, presence of mind and hit the bullseye when it comes to exam with courage and confidence. And last 50 days, last two months, that is the time where you have to handle and manage the anxiety, everything in a very modest way. After all, what is life? If there is no challenge, tomorrow you're all going to be postgraduates. Every day is a challenge. When you become consultant, every day, every new case, every case is a new turn and twist. One case of malaria comes with chills and rigors. Another case of malaria comes like a fever of unknown origin. Another comes a presentation similar to infective endocarditis. Some other will come with a paralysis because of the cerebral malaria. So what we read in textbooks is not what the patients come with, doctor. And we become baffled, we become clean bold a good number of times while managing the patients. So life is everyday challenge as a consultant. And preparation for DPG is one among those journeys. We are going to journey together for you to become the winner. Good night and see you all tomorrow at 6 o'clock evening. And don't forget to download the Incas app. Thank you.